Hi, welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode 113. Today's topic is a little bit different. Does photography make you anxious or excited? Hi, my name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And pay close attention because we are professional podcasters. We're not nervous or excited or anxious about this. And no, we did not necessarily have to start this show over three times before we got to this episode. <laughs> no, no, not us. No, it was just only once. Yes. Do you remember the time that we actually went through an entire podcast and then at the end I said, I forgot to press the record button. It, and it was like over an hour, that episode. Yeah, we're, we're not recording episodes that yeah. long anymore because we want to check to make sure I've actually pressed the button to record it. He gave me that look and I thought, what? And I was kind of ready to get up. And when he said he hadn't pressed record, I gave him a different kind of look. Yeah, that, that, that was early in our podcasting <laughs> career. But right now, hey, we're professional podcasters. We don't make mistakes like that. We're here to make all new mistakes. Yes. And before we get to those mistakes, I want to let you know that show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 113. And there are links to subscribe there and links to subscribe on our player at photoflunky.com. Also, if you're looking for an online portfolio, either to show off your work or to make sales, or just because you want to make sure that I get an affiliate commission, we can save you 15% on SmugMug. Just go to williambeam.com slash SmugMug. And that will automatically put your discount in place. You can click the Try It Now button. You'll see your 15% discount applied. And that is just a wonderful little thing. So as I said, this is an affiliate link. I do get a small commission, but you also get to save 15%. So there's no coupon code to enter. Just go to williambeam.com slash smug mug, and that takes care of everything for you. Sounds good to me. Oh, I thought so. Some people actually get, they get anxiety and they get anxious when they start to take photographs. Have you ever experienced that? Oh, yeah. When I got my first DSLR, I knew I didn't know what I was doing. And it arrived like two days before I went on a long trip. I took it with me. I was really excited when it arrived. And then when I realized that I had no clue how to use the damn thing, I actually started to get really anxious because I'd hinged all my precious vacation memories into this thing that had a mind of its own. And clearly it was not thinking the way I was. And some of those signs you get when you're anxious you know, you feel nervous and you feel a little restless, and, but mostly there's a, a kind of a tension there. Yeah. And you're thinking, these little signs are kind of telling me, did I make a mistake? Am I going to make a mistake? Is this all going to work out? And it's really kind of a negative experience. It is, but you can also, if you recognize that it's normal, you can challenge, challenge you can channel some of that anxiety into something positive. Because something that anxiety does is it makes you tune in really carefully and there is a fine line where you don't want to overthink things but it actually makes you pay attention you get a new sense of awareness about what you're doing that's very true and here's what really happens both anxiety and excitement kind of arouse the same emotions inside of you i mean your heart beats faster you're going to get a little surge of cortisol inside and your body's like getting ready for something and the difference really seems to be are you confident about what you're doing so if you're getting ready to go out and take some photographs and you're really looking forward to getting some great results, you might have all those same things in your body coming up, but instead of feeling nervous about it, you're feeling excited. That's true. And I think you can build confidence. I mean, the, the usual way to do it is you build it through practicing. But another way to help, you know, there's always a first time for something is to get your information first. I think the more you feel like you know the easier it is to roll with it. I think that, and also I think preparation are really good things to make sure you put in place before you're going to go off and do it. So in your case, you knew that you were anxious about this because you really didn't have the preparation to understand your camera. I really but, didn't. But yet the results were important to you. The results were important. And I, let me tell you, the results were absolutely the worst thing. I've seen 1975 instant cameras, you know, those old horrible things take better photos than that. Those first photos of my DSLR, it was dreadful. I had, you know, similar experiences when I started doing portrait photography and then suddenly there's a person on the other side of the lens looking back at you. And after a while, if, if you don't know what you're doing with your camera or if you don't really know how to direct the person over there, if you're not providing feedback to them, you kind of get this feeling that they're looking at you like he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, it's that expectation that, that kind of comes through whatever they're feeling in their eyes. You always either you read it in and it's not there or it really is there. But there's a sense of expectation on you. But you know what? If you're ignorant of what those expectations are, you can be excited again. My very first workshop that I ever went to, you know, for portrait photography, I was thrilled. I was having a blast. I didn't really get that many good shots out of it. And the models were paid to be there. They kind of knew that we were 
learning as we went. So yeah. I didn't have that same kind of judgment. Well, maybe I did have the judgment and I just didn't realize it. But I was excited and happy because something new was happening. I was excited about it. And I didn't have to deliver any results. Yeah. It was all experimentation and, and easy going. But when I flip that around and I'm on my own after the workshop and I started working with some models, then I started feeling a little anxious. I thought, okay, how did I do that again? Yeah, but the other thing is, you know, that little LCD display on the back is a liar. Because, I mean, the shots always look really, really good in there. And some of them look terrible in there. And it, you get a different picture when you, you import them and look at them on a bigger screen. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's why I'm honestly a big fan of tethering to my laptop so we can look at them. The shoot that I did not long ago with uh, Shelly, and I made sure it was a pain to drag all that stuff over to the gym where she was. I mean, that was an hour away, but I loaded up my laptop, my tripod and everything. I set up the table so we could look at the results right there. And if something wasn't right, then we could go back and shoot it over again. And honestly, that took away some anxiety and made it more exciting for me. Well, it removed some of the guesswork. It removed the guesswork. It also removed the thing about, am I going to come back and find out that maybe I didn't get focus on her eye or something, yeah. something critical, but you just can't tell on that little LCD display. Even when you zoom in, sometimes, like you said, it's a liar. It'll tell you, oh yeah, that looks good. Then you get back that, you know, that's, I didn't quite hit it. Exactly. <laughs> Your body is going to give you the same symptoms, but one of the things we've read and kind of looked for this is that how to deal with this kind of stimulation really depends upon your preparation, but also your mental attitude. And do you want to be positive or do you want to be negative? So in other words, are you excited or are you anxious? And honestly, you are what you choose. You are. And I think some of this, there's a certain amount of it that cannot be controlled, but you can also counter it by identifying what is it that's making you anxious. Because if you know the things that are worrying you, you can do some kind of research practice or preparation in advance and it might not take it away but it will at least help offset or throw up potential issues that you can resolve before you get into a situation and I'm, I'm assuming that you know about your photography situation I mean sometimes you find yourself on the spot and uh, well then you just got to do what you got to do well it also not only is it a matter of preparation but some things you can do on the spot is, so for example in preparation if I were just beginning my portrait photography I would kind of tell the model, said, look, I'm new at this. I'm, you know, I want to work with you. We, I want to get the best results we can. And I want your feedback and make sure you're talking to the person that you're shooting. So that kind of relieves a little stress and tension right there. And if you get a nice positive feedback from the person that you're, you're taking your photos, then suddenly that can kind of turn into excitement. So you can take the same physical things that are happening to you and turn them around just by communicating. I think confidence is a lot of that because what happens there is you it, it boosts your confidence when you get some positive feedback. Well, if you get some fe positive feedback, you get a little sense of trust, like, okay, I understand you knew it this, but I'll work with you. That's a vote of confidence right yeah. there. And that helps you out. But not all photographers are out uh, taking portraits. So sometimes you could be doing something completely different. And this is going back to when we were doing an assignment, or you did an assignment for our Orlando local site yes. at Epcot. And you were feeling a little stressed for that because that was I like did. the first time I'd asked you to go off on your own and do something. I did. And look, w William's style of photography and mine are very, very different. So he was putting a lot of faith in me with this website that, you know, you'd worked hard on this website for a long time. And I kind of felt like I couldn't let you down with it. But I also knew that I don't see the world through a camera lens at all the same way that you do. My approach is completely different. I've got a very basic approach to taking photos. And yeah, I, I was feeling some pressure there because I kind of felt like if I didn't deliver to your standards, that it I was going to let you down. I was going to let the website down. You know, it's just a whole and bunch so, of pressure on me. So how did you deal with it? I had a few drinks. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think I had one, <laughs> but that wasn't why. I um. Well, it was you know, wine once, the, the, the thing is, I had a list of things that I wanted to work through, and I did have a rough plan for getting around where, I, you know, the areas that I wanted to cover and the kinds of shots I wanted to cover. I had to take some photos that are a little different. I think we spoke about it, and that, that helped a lot because I knew that, there were things that you wanted that were different to what I might have just naturally been drawn to. We had discussed them. So I was actually stopping thinking and taking a look at, you know, 
potential opportunities to get those shots and usually those were things that were a little bit not quite so zoomed in because I tend to crop really tight and we needed bigger picture photos so having the list and having discussed it first helped a lot also I think once you get started with something you stop thinking so much if you just keep moving once you get into a rhythm I think you're okay I think that's really the big tip is stop thinking about it and just start doing it in other words stop thinking about all the pressure or what's at stake with this and just start saying how do I make this happen yeah and as you start doing that you'll build confidence as you you know get your shots and even if your first shots are mistakes you can look at them evaluate them and say all right I need to change this or that and then you can try again and well, you know unless you're at like a live action event then you can't ask the basketball player who just made a great layup to go back and do it again well, yeah and you know that also helped because about I'd say just after lunchtime, because I'd gone there for the whole day. Yeah. I actually stopped and sat down to quickly scroll through my photos to see which ones I needed to revisit and retake. Now, not every situation allows you an opportunity for a redo, but I was in the place for a day. There were some where maybe the lighting was wrong or the crowds were a little bit, things were a bit busy. And I was able to go back and not necessarily get the same shot, but capture the same message um, in the air and, you know, in that area or particular spot by, by redoing it or even just better light. I think some of the things that I asked you that put pressure on you or that was the idea that we needed to have room for graphics or text on some of these photos. Yeah. And at the time, that was something I had not worked with at all. No. So like you said, you crop very tightly. So I'd ask you to do something that was outside the style that you normally do. But I also had confidence in your ability to do it. Yeah. Because you I mean, you've seen headlines or social media where there's something maybe off to the left or the right, and then the text is in the empty space. Yes. And I missed it with a few. I mean, there were a few that I thought, oh, that's a great shot, and I loved the photo until I tried to put it into a 16 by 9 format, and I thought, oh, um, yeah, this isn't going to work. You know what? Your first time out at something, mistakes are, they're going to happen, and you just have to make your mistakes and forgive yourself and move on, and then the next time you do it, you know, all right, next time I will go back and I'll try and do it this way. Yeah, now now I know. And in fact, now when I take pictures, if it's for a particular purpose, I take them at multiple focal lengths, the same shot, to allow for that crop. So it allows the square crop. It allows me to crop top and bottom for something wide, like a 16 by 9. And that is something that I've learned through practice. I'm not necessarily that great at guessing it exactly. So I, I've learned to give myself some wiggle room for those particular shots. And that's one of the important things that can help you reduce your anxiety, maybe help you get a little bit more excited about it, is talking to whoever it is that needs the results and saying, what are you looking for? What's the purpose behind this? So long as you understand the purpose behind your photos, then that really helps. It's like, do I need to get in tight? Do I want to shoot wider so I've got room for some graphics? Am I, am I doing to do a cover page for a magazine and they've got to have some place to put the title of the magazine up top? All these things kind of come into play is what is your purpose for your photos. And that helps you, I think, maybe get a bit more excited because you know what you have to do. And that comes back around to confidence. Yeah. And something else I do, this probably sounds a little bit weird, but when I'm taking a series of photos, and it's not necessarily for somebody, but for whatever purpose, you know, maybe for a website, maybe for graphics, may, maybe it is for a client. I know I'm going to take more than one photo of each particular scene or, or set. The first photo that I take is for me. I pretend it's for nobody else. The first photo I take is something that I like. For me, once I've got my shot, it kind of, I feel, okay, I'm happy. I like that. And it's usually not something that's usable for its purpose. And then I step back and I think somehow doing something that makes me invest in the, the photo and have something that I know I can take away. It, it's almost like, okay, I got what I want. Now I'm ready to do what everybody else or what, what the purpose wants. Yeah. Sometimes you do what you want and other times you do what you have to do. Yeah. I always make sure I get to do what I want as well. <laughs> but I think, no, I think that's a good thing because that makes you feel comfortable. Said, so, okay, I nailed this shot. I know that this is my style. I got this out of the way. And, and I don't even mean out of the way. Sometimes people might hire you or just ask for you to take photos because of your style. Yeah. So that's, that's not a bad thing. That's a, a positive. And also I think, like you said, that helps build your confidence and reduce some of the anxiety that may come up when you're in a situation where there's something at stake, whether it's a person on the other side of your lens where you've got to deliver for a particular result. For sure. And, you know, I think part of it is psychological. Maybe all of it is psychological on that. But what happens is when you're taking a photo for yourself, you still do care about the lights and the shadows and the composition and things. So when I'm taking mine, it might not be the style that's needed. But in doing getting my own perfect shot first, I've also addressed those issues. So I might have changed the exposure. I might have had to zoom in or zoom out. I might have changed my angles or rearranged the things. And 
I, I think you, you get to troubleshoot without feeling the pressure first. And then I sat back and, okay, now I'm on the job. And this can happen. You might be excited when you start off on a project. And then if things aren't going quite right, it may turn into anxiety. Oh, I had one of those last week. <laughs> oh, what? Tell, all right. Tell me about that one. Okay. So I'm like really lazy and it's because I'm lazy that I'm done with using flash. So for me, it's a whole bunch easier to get a laundry basket, throw my little props and things in because my, my stuff's kind of on a small scale and I go outside where there's daylight because then I don't have to worry about light stands and all these things that fry my brain and I've got a little spot outside where I do it and I set everything up and I had foam boards as my backdrop and my base and everything and these things were literally balancing on corks and lunch boxes and it, it, you yeah you'd just be amazed at how it's, basic it's my quite system, a scene. It, it's quite it's like a behind the scenes people would just jaw drop it would have done it's it's so simple once everything was set up i had part of the set was this uh, and this was for um for a, a business for a product review mm -hmm. and i had this um pre and post workout drink that i had to show pouring into a bottle now when it goes the powder looks white but when it mixes with the water it goes fluorescent pink don't even ask what's in it in the middle of all this, when I was all set up, you know, you kind of, I've got everything ready. Now I'm ready to do the pour and I've got to nail these shots on the pour. Otherwise I'm kind of, every time I'm losing product for it in a bottle of water. And as I was pouring, this gust of wind just came seemingly out of nowhere and it hit the back foam board, which knocked everything over, which stained everything on there with this bright pink stuff, messed up my board. I was just like, I do not want to take pictures anymore. See, this is, this is why I like flash photography. I, I did, just didn't do very well with it. You know, I tried with the lights. William's got these great lights and you got everything there for me to use. And I just, I don't know, I just didn't get it right. The whole thing was, I was, I don't know, I'm just not smart with it. I need probably a tutorial. I don't think it's a matter that you're not smart. It's simply that you haven't had a tutorial and, and I can provide one to you. We just simply need to find the time. But that's kind of a situation where you can go out there and you think, okay, I know what I'm doing. I've got set this up. I've taken a thousand photos here before. But then something unexpected comes up and happens and just really interrupts something that's important to you. Well, yeah. And I had a deadline for this project, which was like the next day. It was yeah. one of those short notice things. And as well as that, I also had a very limited time where I had the freedom to stand where I was to get the pictures. So what we found with comparing anxiety to excitement really is a lot of it is mental. We found a number of things that actually can kind of help us out. Preparation certainly is going to be one of them. Yeah, so absolutely. Knowing, knowing what's expected. If you're dealing with someone else, whether they're in the photo or they're expecting the photo, you want to communicate with them to make sure that you understand what they want delivered. Yeah. And it sounds like such a basic thing, but you know, a lot of people make assumptions and then they deliver something. And it's like the very first wedding I ever shot was you know, for a cousin of mine. I didn't know anything about weddings and she was just convinced that I was the right person to do it. And I thought, well, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I remember her looking at the photos afterwards and she's, these are just horrible. Oh, oh! I know. I felt horrible about it too. But it's but, a lot of pressure to but, put on somebody. Well, that's what happens if you get a 16-year-old kid with a camera and think that you're going to save money on your wedding photos. Yeah. So yeah. anyways, that I wasn't uh, anxious at all until she said that. Yeah. By that time, it's too late. But if you can prepare ahead of time, communicate about what's expected so you can deliver the results. And then if things start going south, you know, evaluate while you're in the middle of your shoot and make adjustments as necessary. A lot of those things, plus gaining experience as you do more and more photography, are really gonna eliminate that anxiety. That's true, and also just to let you cover the other end of the scale, when you're communicating with your subject or the person to whom you need to deliver the, the, the finished photos, make sure that they understand that there's a process that goes in. Don't bore them with all the technical stuff because these are usually not some people into photography, but let them know that there are time scales. You know, if a model's over, it's going to take time for this. It's going to take time for that. And it's going to take about this much time for me to process and everything and deliver and send you proofs. And the same for any other, you know, project that you're working on where you have to deliver something. I think if you make sure that they are aware of the, the time scales and the expectations and other things that go involved without actually going into detail where they need to understand photography. So keep it brief, but make sure you communicate that because I think when everyone's got realistic expectations, it's a lot easier to have a stress-free experience because it's not just during taking the photos. Afterwards can be stressful as well. Yeah, and if I were going to summarize it, the best way to get confidence is to eliminate the unknowns and the assumptions. Throw yourself in. Yeah, throw yourself in. Make sure you communicate. Make sure you're not assuming something is going to happen because every time something changes that you assumed or it doesn't work out that way. So eliminate the unknowns and eliminate the assumptions. Make sure you're dealing with real information and facts. 
and then go out and have fun with it. And that's when you can end up being excited with your photography rather than anxious. Thank you so much for listening to the Photo Flunky Show. We really appreciate you. Show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 113. And while you're there, if you're into Lightroom and also enjoy portrait photography, go to williambeam.com slash free brushes. I've got a series of little portrait brushes that work in Lightroom that will help you enhance eyes, skin, and whiten teeth. Very basic, very simple, but also very effective. And if you're looking to subscribe to the show, please go to williambeam.com slash iTunes. It'll take you right there. And you can subscribe to the show and get it delivered to your player right away. Thank you. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>